aside from all the different types of endocrine glands that we focused on previously, there exist other organs in our body that also have endocrine capabilities. That is, many organs in our body have the ability to actually produce hormones and release them into our bloodstream. So let's discuss these other organs that also have endocrine capabilities. So we have kidneys, we have the heart, we have the skin, we have the pineal gland or the pineal body, we have the liver and we have our stomach. So let's begin by briefly discussing some of the hormones released by our kidneys. Now the two hormones that we're going to discuss is erythropoietin and also our calcitriol. Now I also briefly discussed a proteolytic enzyme known as renin, but renin is not actually a hormone and that's exactly why I placed the star next to number one. So a special type of cell, our kidney cell known as the granular cell or the juxtaglomerular cell is responsible for synthesizing and secreting the proteolytic enzyme renin. Now renin is not actually a hormone, it's a proteolytic enzyme, but renin is used in this renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway to actually produce important types of hormones, namely angiotensin 2 and aldosterone as well as ADH that basically are responsible for regulating blood pressure as well as the blood volume inside our blood vessels. So renin is not a hormone but it is an important molecule that is used to produce important hormones. Now an actual hormone that is released by the cells in the kidney is erythropoietin as well as calcitriol. Now, erythropoietin is released by a special type of cell inside the kidney known as the extragramellural mesangial cells. Now, these cells release our erythropoietin, which is basically a glycoprotein hormone. It's a hormone that is composed of a peptide that has a glycogen, it has a sugar component attached to that protein. Now, this protein, this hormone is released when we have a low concentration of oxygen inside our blood and what it does is it stimulates the red bone marrow inside our bone to basically produce and release red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. And that's exactly why this is known as erythropoietin because it produces more erythrocytes. Now, if we have more red blood cells inside our bloodstream, that means our oxygen level inside our blood will increase. So that means erythropoietin basically increases the amount of oxygen that is found inside our blood. Now, the second type of hormone released by our kidneys is calcitriol. And calcitriol is actually a lipid soluble hormone that is an active form of vitamin D. And what it basically does is it stimulates the increase in the calcium and phosphate ion concentration inside our blood. So this is basically used to control and regulate the amount of calcium found inside our blood. So it is stimulated, it is released when we have a low concentration of calcium in the blood and what it does is it ultimately increases the amount of calcium inside our blood by two methods. Firstly, it increases the ability of our cells in the gut, in our intestines, to basically absorb more calcium from our food and uh, more phosphate ions from our food. And secondly, it also increases bone resorption. It increases the amount of a bone matrix that breaks down and releases our calcium and phosphate ions into our blood. So the kidneys produce two important hormones, erythropoietin and calcitriol. And it also produces a proteolytic enzyme renin that is necessary uh, in producing angiotestin 1, angiotestin 2, and aldosterone, as well as stimulating the release of ADH, the antidiuretic hormone, by the posterior pituitary gland. Now let's move on to our second organ, the heart. So the heart is basically a organ that consists of our cardiac muscle cells, also known as cardiac myocytes. 
Now, special types of cardiac myocytes located in the atria region of our heart, in the upper chambers of the heart, basically are responsible for releasing an important type of peptide hormone known as the atrial natriuretic peptide or ANP. And what this hormone basically does is it dilates our blood vessels. So this is a vasodilator. That basically means it increases the thickness of our blood vessels and that decreases our blood pressure. And what it also does is it decreases the amount of blood volume found inside our blood and that also decreases our blood pressure. So basically the A and P hormone is the opposite of aldosterone. So recall that aldosterone actually increases the amount of sodium that we take back into our blood. But what A and P does, what the atrial natrio, uh, natriuretic peptide hormone does is it basically increases the amount of sodium that we secrete into our urine and that decreases the amount of solute inside our blood and that ultimately increases uh, the amount of water that leaves our blood system. So the atrial natriuretic peptide hormone released by the heart is responsible for controlling the blood pressure for decreasing our blood pressure inside our body. So this is released when we have a very high blood pressure inside our blood vessels of the heart and of the body. Now let's move on to another organ, the third organ, the skin. Now the skin doesn't actually produce a hormone directly what it does is it produces a pre-hormone a molecule that eventually is used to form a hormone in fact we produce this molecule inside the skin known as our cholecalciferol that is eventually used to produce calcitriol so basically in the inside our skin cells we use uv radiation so the energy that comes from UV radiation to basically transform cholecalciferol or actually to, uh, to form cholecalciferol and then the cholecalciferol which is basically vitamin D uh, travels into our liver and inside the liver the cholecalciferol is transformed into our uh, calcidiol and then the calcidiol that is formed in the liver travels into our kidneys and inside the kidneys the calcitriol is transformed into our calcitriol and the calcitriol is ultimately used to regulate the calcium concentration inside our blood. So we see the cholecalciferol is the molecule that is ultimately used to produce our calcitriol by the kidneys. Now let's move on to our pineal body also known as the pineal gland. So basically this is the section, the gland in our brain that is used to produce a hormone known as melatonin. And melatonin is used to basically regulate our sleep-wake uh, sleep cycle in our body. So there should be an E after the K. Now let's move on to our liver. So we actually briefly discussed an important type of hormone that is produced by the liver when we mentioned and discussed the renin angiotestin aldosterone pathway. So basically the liver is responsible for producing our angiotensin hormone. Remember, our zymogen form of this hormone that is produced by the liver is known as angiotensinogen. And the angiotensinogen is basically used and transformed into the active form by the renin that is produced by the kidneys. So angiotensin is the peptide hormone produced and released by the liver cells in its inactive zymogen form called angiotensinogen. It helps us regulate the blood volume as well as the blood pressure inside our body. Now, another important type of hormone released by our liver is a hormone known as 
thrombopoietin and what this is is it is is it basically is a glycoprotein and this glycoprotein hormone which binds onto the cell membrane of target cells basically helps us produce platelets that are used in blood clotting and we'll and we'll discuss the function of this much more in much more detail when we'll discuss the blood clot cascade now the final organ that I'd like to briefly discuss is the stomach. The stomach actually produces many different hormones and many different enzymes as does our small intestine. And we'll discuss this in much more detail when we'll discuss our digestive system. In this lecture, I'd like to briefly mention that the stomach releases a peptide hormone known as gastrin. And gastrin is basically used to stimulate the secretion of of hydrochloric acid known as gastric acid by the parietal cells of our stomach and that basically decreases our pH and increases our acidity inside our stomach and that gets our body ready for the process of digestion, the breakdown of the mac macromolecules in our food that we ingest into smaller pieces so we can ingest those pieces into our body, into our bloodstream.